All right, we got a problem here where it's an expanding square that's increasing at the constant rate of three square inches per second. So that means we have some sort of square um, and its area is increasing by three square inches per second. That means at some point it looks like this and then at another point it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we know the rate at which it's increasing. We know that rate is dA over dt and it's three inches um, squared per second. So it's going to get three inches, uh, three square inches more every single second. So for instance if um, this over here started off at um, one square inch then one second later it goes up to four square inches and then one second later it goes up to seven square inches because every second it's going up by three square inches. Um, this is a nice um, rate of change where it's just a constant. Okay, and then they're asking us um, how fast is the length s of the sides increasing when the area is 49 square inches? Well, the area is 49 square inches. We can write a nice formula for that. We can just write that a is equal to 49 inches squared. Uh, and then it says, how fast is the length s of the sides increasing? Well, that's a question. And it says, how fast is the length s of the sides increasing? Well, how fast is going to be a rate? So it's going to have dt on the bottom again. But it's how fast is the side increasing. So how can we do this? We can start with the original equation. A is equal to S squared. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take D by DT of both sides. And the reason why we're going to do that is because if you use the chain rule, we're going to get out a ds over dt, namely the thing that they're asking for. But how are you going to get it? You're going to get it when you set up ds squared over ds times ds dt. Another way you could have arrived at this is by saying that over here, when we were doing ds squared over dt, these letters are not the same. We have S on the top, T on the bottom. But if you take a look at DS squared over DS, well, the letters are the same. That means we'll just be able to calculate that the way we're used to. That means we'll be able to calculate it as 2S, in the same way that you would take DX squared by DX and just get 2X. But if you do that, you would know that you would need to multiply by ds over dt. One really nice way to remember that is that the ds's would cancel. But we don't want to cancel them in this case, so let's just get rid of that. We want to keep them the way they are. And we just want to keep moving and write 2s times ds dt is equal to da dt. Well, da dt they actually told us. Um, they told us it was 3 inches squared per second. And now it looks like we can't solve it for dsdt, <coughs> which is the thing that we want, but we can find out what s is. How can we find out what s is? Well, they told us the area is equal to 49 square inches, so we can go to this and say that that must be equal to s squared, because the area is equal to s squared. So then what would s have to be? s would have to be 7 inches. So we can put in 3 inches squared per second is equal to 2 times 7 inches times ds dt. So if we keep going with that, we have 14 inches times ds dt is equal to 3 inches squared per second. And then we can cancel out 
one of the inches on each side. So if I get rid of one on this side, I can just get rid of the two as an exponent, and I'll just be left with inches to the first power, which is what I want. So I have three inches per second is equal to 14 ds dt. So now I get ds dt is equal to three divided by 14 inches per second.